This is the first lesson in Unit 2, Polynomial Functions. Section 3.1, Exploring Polynomial Functions. By the end of this lesson, I can define a polynomial function, state the degree of a polynomial function, connect the nth degree, or sorry, connect the nth difference with the degree, state the various properties of a polynomial function. So in this unit, we will be examining polynomials and polynomial functions in one variable. So we're only going to be looking at polynomial functions with the variable x. In this table, you can see that these are expressions of polynomial functions, whereas these expressions are not polynomial functions. And the characteristic of polynomial functions is as follows. The coefficients a0, a1, up to an are real numbers, and the exponents are always whole numbers. So the exponents on the x's always have to be whole numbers. Right? The table above shows examples of polynomial expressions versus non-polynomial expressions. A polynomial function is a function that contains a polynomial expression. The degree of the function is the highest exponent in the expression. So that's a very important definition. The degree of the function is the highest exponent in the expression. More precisely, the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents applying to the variables in that term. So the degree of the term is the sum of the exponents applying to the variables in that term. The degree of a polynomial or the degree of a polynomial is the same as that of its highest degree term. So if we were to take a look at, for example, uh, this second row right here in the table, the highest degree is seven right here. So therefore the degree of that polynomial is degree seven. Finite differences to find the degree of the function. Finite differences refers to subtracting successive y values in the function. We have done first and second differences in past courses. The rule, however, in this case, is that uh, the constant nth difference means the polynomial function is to the nth degree. So when you do uh, first, second, third, fourth differences, uh, whenever you arrive at a constant difference, that is the degree of the polynomial. Okay, So, complete the finite differences until you find the degree of the polynomial function. So we're going to zoom in and find the degree of the first set of x and y values. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a column here, just to indicate that this is going to be our first differences. So first differences. And so we'll take the second value, negative 7, and subtract that from negative 26. And that first difference is equal to 19. 1 minus 0 is 1. Apologies. 0 minus 7 is uh, 7. 0 minus minus 7 is 7, rather. Uh, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And then 9 minus 2 is 7. And 28 minus 9 is equal to 19. Okay, as you can see, we do not have constant first differences. So we need to move on to second differences. So again, I'll take my first differences and find the uh, differences between those values. So 7 minus 19 is equal to negative 12. 1 minus 7 is equal to negative 6. 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. And 19 minus 7 is equal to 12. Again, I do not have constant uh, differences in my second differences. So this is not a uh, polynomial of degree 2. So I need to go to the third differences. And negative 6 minus negative 12, well, that's equal to positive 6. 0 minus minus 6 is equal to 6. 6 minus 0 is equal to 6. And 12 minus 6 is equal to 6. All right, so since I have arrived at a constant 
difference within my third differences, uh, I can come to the conclusion that therefore the degree of this polynomial function is 3. Right? I had constant third differences, therefore the degree of this polynomial function is 3. Right, we're going to move on and um, try the next table. In this table here, we're going to um, make a quick correction to the first y value. So uh, the first y value here we see as being 69. Uh, we're going to correct that and we're going to change that to a uh, 59. So go ahead and correct that and make that a 59. So as we did before, uh, we're going to do our first differences and create a column that says first differences. So first differences right here. And very quickly, that's equal to negative 49. That's equal to negative 9. It's equal to negative 1. 1, 13, and in this case we get 61. Alright, so we don't have constant first differences. Let's try second differences. That right there is 40. That right there is 8. That right there is 2. That's going to be 12. And there we have 48. Okay, again, second differences did not yield a constant value. Let's move on to third differences. Okay, over here. It's 32. Rather, negative 32. That right there is negative 6. Right there is 10. And that is 36. Okay, so it's definitely not a third degree polynomial, so let's take a look at the fourth. Subtracting these two, I get 26. Subtracting these two, I get 16. And subtracting these two, I get 26 as well. Okay, and then let's take a look at the fifth difference. 10, 10. All right. So by the time we hit our fifth difference, uh, we ended up with a constant value. So we can say, therefore, the degree of this polynomial function is 5. Moving on to talk about the general shapes and general properties of polynomial functions, the domain of a polynomial function is the set of all real numbers. So all polynomial functions span all the x values. The range of a polynomial function may be all real numbers, however it may have an upper bound or lower bound but it never has both. So for example, uh, what we mean by that is you can have, uh, for example, if the polynomial is, uh, the highest exponent is one, right? That will span all real numbers for the y values. Same thing with cubics or quintics, right? This is gonna span all the y values. A polynomial though, with an even number uh, for its degree, could have, like for example, an absolute minimum right down here. Right? So there could be some restrictions, however, on your um, uh, our y values. There are no vertical or horizontal asymptotes in a polynomial function. And say you had a polynomial function of degree zero. So that just means that you have um, f of x is equal to a times x to the power of zero 
Well, that just means a times 1, because x to the power of 0 is 1. So therefore, f of x is just equal to a, and that's a horizontal line. right? So a polynomial of degree 0 is a horizontal line. Other polynomial functions have shapes similar to the ones below, but may differ somewhat based on the coefficients and the number of terms within the polynomial function. So these are examples of general shapes of polynomial functions where the degree is listed right here below. And they can have these types of shapes, but there can also be differences in the shapes as well. And that's what we're going to spend the next uh, few lessons examining. Great, thanks for watching.